Good morning. It is day one of trying the Fit Affinity supplements. So excited. Uh, the first thing that I am trying out of the whole range is the pre-workout. Uh, I am excited because it only has 150 milligrams of caffeine. So many pre-workouts are just packed with an insane amount of stimulants and caffeine. Like some literally have upwards of three to 400 milligrams and that you guys is so unnecessary and just not good for your adrenals. So um, I actually love that this one's a little bit lower in caffeine. So I'll let you guys know. Let's do a live taste test. Wine glass because Fancy AF. Nothing like fresh jar pre-workout in the morning. <laughs> Flavor is strawberry passion lemonade. Yum. I suppose I could have used one of my 8,000 shaker cups, right? I guess this gives us a true test of mixability. Does anyone else like to drink pre-workout out of like a normal glass? Pretty good. It's not my favorite, honestly. Tastes a little like cough syrup, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't love it. Damn, that's disappointing because it smells really good and it looks really pretty. But the flavor is like, it's not bad by any means. I've just definitely had better. Um, flavor wise, I would rate it a five out of 10. It's not bad, but it's not particularly good. It's kind of getting better as I go. Is it passion fruit? Did I say that? I don't like passion fruit. If you like passion fruit, you'll probably really like this. Um, it's like the one flavor that I never like. I love like mango, I love strawberry, I love lemonade. I literally love everything. The one thing I don't like is passion fruit. I'm like, what is that particular flavor? <laughs> yeah, that's why. So yeah, I'm sure you'd love this if you like passion fruit. It's very tropical. I will give props that it's not overly sweet. Um, like not at all. I cannot stand when I take a pre-workout and I feel like I just did a shot of sugar to the head. Um, I can't stand when they're just like so, so packed with sucralose and artificial sweeteners. Yeah, sucralose is the second to last ingredient in here. So I don't know if you guys know about when you're reading ingredient labels, the first ingredient that you read is always the one that is um, the most prominent in the mixture or in the ingredients, right? So. Anytime you're looking at a food label, the first thing that's on there, if it's sugar, that means that's the highest level, that's the highest ingredient that's in that whatever food you're looking at. So, and then it gets less and less as you're reading throughout the ingredient list. So keep that in mind when you're looking at food labels. Um, oftentimes we just look at macronutrients and we disregard the ingredient list when ultimately that's even more important. So make sure that you're looking at your ingredient list and there's, if there's a list of a bunch of crap that you can't pronounce, don't eat it. Um, yeah, sucralose is the second to last thing in here. I haven't tried anything else yet, but I'll keep you guys posted. It is a beautiful day. A beautiful, beautiful day. I'm heading off to the gym. I work with a trainer once a week um, just to really challenge myself, quite honestly. I mean, Let's be real, we all need a challenge from time to time. Um, I write my own programming for all the rest of the weeks and the months and I've been doing that for years. Um, but I mean like that's just my job. I literally do this for hundreds of women um, over the years that I've been a trainer and a coach and sometimes your girl just needs somebody to just tell, tell, tell me what to do and just be mindless. I wanna be, that's that's what it is. I wanna walk into the gym once per week and just shut off my brain and just be mindless and just listen to instruction from somebody else. Um, it's just so necessary to have that time where you just kinda can 
unplug and shut off and really it's it's cool because um, this is what I do for, for my job, for work, even though I don't do any in-person personal training per se, um, I'm helping people with their fitness goals. And so it's cool to see other people practice that craft. And my trainer's awesome. Her name's Austin. She's great. I love her. Um, so I'm about to go meet her in just a few minutes here. It is like 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, just took some pre-workout. I do train fasted, as I've mentioned, um, intermittent fasting, uh, so I'm still fasted right now. Um, I will definitely do a full video on that because I know some of you guys are watching and you're like, oh, what? I could never do that. Um, and a couple years ago, I probably would have said the same thing. My body's so accustomed to it now um, and I actually feel so incredible. I have the best workouts. I'm so clear-headed, the most focus, most energy. My strength is amazing. Um, so trust me, I'll do a full entire video on it because it really does require um, an entire video to tell you all about you know, the science behind everything, why I do it, and also who, who it's good for and who it's not good for. Some people, Intermittent fasting wouldn't, wouldn't really necessarily be great for. So, I'm gonna head to the gym, got a full work day again. Ugh, my job, I love my job. You know, guys, life is too short to not be so excited about what you are going to do for the day. Um, super blessed that God has put this passion and this purpose in my heart and has also given me the strength and the courage and just the tools and has equipped me with everything that I need to uh, live it out and to serve my clients and just, yeah, it's a blessing, it's a blessing. Uh, okay, I'm gonna head to the gym. I do start my morning every morning with my morning routine, which always involves prayer and so I'm still in that mindset where I'm just praising and worshiping and just feel so filled with gratitude right now. Um, I think in like a prior clip, I said that I was going downstairs to renew my lease. I did that. Um, so excited because guess what guys, this is my first time in 10 years that I've actually renewed a lease. Like I've literally moved apartment to apartment to apartment to apartment, city to city to city to city every year for 10 years. I lived in four different apartments in Chicago when I was in grad school and then working as a, as a psychologist. I lived in literally four apartments. Um, and then I moved to, briefly I moved to New Jersey, which was like so long ago. I lived there for like three months. Then I moved to Orange County. Then I moved to Venice. Then I moved to Marina Del Rey. Um, oh, I lived in three apartments in Orange County. Forgot about that. Then after Marina Del Rey, I moved here. And I, for the first time in my life, I'm like, this is my home. I love it. Um, I really could see San Diego being my forever home. I love it so much. Uh, will I stay like in apartment living forever? Like, no, absolutely not. But I live downtown now and I just, this is, I, I just feel so at home. I love it here so much. Um, so if you have never been to San Diego, I highly recommend. It truly is like a little slice of heaven. Whenever people ask me to describe San Diego, I tell them that I believe that God created San Diego so that us humans could experience a slice of heaven on earth. <laughs> like it really is that magical. Um, so I'm super excited to just stay put for months. Feels so good. Uh, life just feels amazing right now. I'm feeling so blessed. I feel like truly I had a FaceTime with my mom and dad last night. Insert photo. And I told them that I feel like God is delivering me a breakthrough and is delivering me all of these. There have just so many, been so many blessings in my life, especially over the last two weeks, like an abundance, like an overflow of blessings. And I, I told them that I feel like he's delivering all of these to me. You know, I'm reaping my harvest essentially because I weathered the storm. And it totally reminded me of the Bible verse, uh, Galatians 6, 9, where it says, uh, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest. And I, I mean, like I'm a full testament to that guys. And I, I know I've said this over and over again, but I promise you, if you are going through a rainy season right now, do not grow weary, you know, keep showing up for yourself, keep doing just even the smallest acts per day of just showing up for yourself, making commitments to yourself, um, 
praying, doing a couple things that bring you joy, that you can express gratitude for, and man, I, I promise you at the proper time, your breakthrough will be delivered. You will reap a harvest. Harvest, do not, just do not grow weary, you guys. I promise you it's coming. The breakthrough is coming. The sunshine always comes out after the rain. Um, all right, I'm gonna be running late. And that's the last thing that I want to do because that's actually one of my pet peeves is when people don't respect other people's time. So I'm gonna be respectful of my trainer's time and get to the gym. See you guys soon. All right guys, so before I close out the vlog, I really wanted to touch on the topic of confidence. Um, it was a reoccurring theme that Marie and I really dived super deep into um, on the podcast that we did. It's gonna be coming out the second week in February. So um, yeah, I'll let you guys know as soon as I have a link for that, but I wanted to touch a little bit on this today um, because it's really something I've been thinking a lot about personally for myself. Um, and really having such a massive breakthrough in my own life and in my own body. And in the past, you know, I think many of us and maybe some of you watching still do, really do attribute confidence or attach it to a certain look or an image or a certain body or a certain number on the scale. And what Marie and I really dived super deep into and what I have discovered in my own life is that it, confidence absolutely actually has nothing to do with the way that we look. And you're probably like, what, Karen? Excuse me. And I'm telling you this because literally I have been at the leanest of lean, competition lean, I have been 25 pounds over my stage weight, which is about where I'm at now. Um, and I can tell you that for the first time in my life, I literally feel my most confident. And you're like, what? You're 25 pounds above your stage weight? Like how, how could you possibly feel confident? Because I realize that confidence has absolutely nothing to do with my body and it has everything to do with my gifts and the value that I give to the world and guess what the same heart that I have the same heart that I have it's exactly the same whether I'm 90 pounds or 115 pounds you know it doesn't matter and the heart that I have it's the same exact heart whether I'm in a shredded body or a happy lifestyle body. It's the same. My heart is the same and your heart is the same. My value and the gifts that I'm giving to the world, I can show up and I can powerfully give them regardless of my what my body looks like. My confidence does not stem from my body. Now when I said earlier that I'm in, um, I'm starting a fat loss phase, what really triggered this talk for me was that I realized for the first time in my life that I'm starting a fat loss phase not because I feel like I have to. Not because I feel like I want to change my body because I'm not currently happy in it. And it's such a liberating and a freeing feeling. Do I feel like I will feel healthier? If I lose a little body fat, yeah. But am I perfectly happy and confident where I'm at right now? Yes. And so this, this fat loss phase is, is simply an act of like honoring my body, that I get to do that, that I've worked really hard to repair my metabolism and worked so hard to repair my hormones that now I'm in a place where I get to enter in a fat loss phase. And I'm not doing it out of an act of punishing my body. I'm doing it out of an act of loving and honoring my body and so i want to touch on just seven ways to improve your confidence that have absolutely nothing to do with your body or the way that you look and so one of them is something that i touched a lot on on last week's video and it is making commitments to yourself and you're probably like, how does that improve my confidence? Well, I'm going to tell you. Um, one of the fastest and best and most assured ways to improve your confidence is to make a commitment to yourself and follow through with it. 
There's nothing more powerful than your word. And what I mean by that is sticking to the commitment that you make to yourself long after motivation disappears. Because let's be real, motivation is fleeting. So here you're relying on discipline and you are relying on your word. And the more you see yourself follow through with those commitments, the more your confidence in yourself is going to grow. And I'm not talking about massive commitments here. You could literally make daily small commitments and that's actually what I recommend because it's those small wins every day that add up to the big ones. So start small, start with three small commitments that you can make for yourself every day. If you're watching this, get out a journal right now, get out a piece of paper and write down three commitments that you're gonna stick to today. Follow through with them repeat, rinse and repeat again tomorrow. Number two is staying in alignment with your needs and your desires and honoring your boundaries in order to do that. So this is gonna mean a couple of things. It may mean saying no to people, things, thought patterns and behaviors that are no longer serving you and no longer helping you grow. It may also mean investing in yourself so that you can continue to level up, so that you can continue to grow into that person that you know you're meant to be, into your highest self, into your best self. It's going to require you to level up. It's gonna require you to invest in yourself. It's going to require you to say no to the things that are keeping you stagnant and aren't helping you be better, aren't helping you grow, aren't serving you, and aren't helping you level up. And along those same lines, the third thing that I want to mention is staying true to you regardless of what that looks like to other people. What this does is this truly helps you to just embody the person that you are, honor the power that you have to stay true to you, and the more that you do that, the more confident, the more empowered and powerful you're going to feel just in your own inner being. Because at the end of the day, let's be real, people are going to judge you regardless of what you do. And life is too short to live your life for others' expectations. So step into who you want to be, what you want to do, do the things that light you up regardless of what they look like to other people. Stay true to your passions, stay true to your purpose, and the more that you walk that path, the more confident you're going to feel. Number five is to get your booty moving. And so this can look like weightlifting, this can look like yoga, this can literally look like getting out for a walk every single day, this can look like doing handstands in your living room. I don't care, just get your body moving every single day. What this is going to do is release some positive, feel good endorphins every single day that's only going to fill your confidence bank up even more so get your body moving the next one is do something every single day that brings you joy um so something i did that i encourage you to do again if you're writing this down i encourage you to do this i made a list of literally every single thing that brings me joy that brought me joy it's literally hanging up on my refrigerator downstairs and this could be something as simple as taking your dog for a walk something that seems silly but that's on my list is getting a blowout um, and then deeper things like having phone calls with friends having FaceTimes with family um, meeting friends and or family face to face uh, these are just some of the things that are on my list I'm not trying to put thoughts or ideas into your mind because I want you to think about the things that bring you joy make a list of everything even those things that are seemingly so small I don't care if it's like sitting in the a bubble bath for 30 minutes that's might be on my mind, may or may not be. And then next to them, what I want you to do is write down in your perfect, ideal, happiest, like most joyful world, how many times you would need to engage in those things in order to feel the most joy. Um, so personally for me, I think I have family FaceTimes once or twice a week, face-to-face um, -face interactions with friends at least two times a week, phone calls to friends four times a week, um, two blowouts a month, um, daily walks with my dog, um, daily movement, daily exercise. So I actually have an actionable amount of time that I'm going to engage in those things in order to truly receive that the most joy from doing them. So make your joy list. Write down everything that makes you happy, brings you joy. Next to it, write down how many times you need to engage in those things to get the most joy from it. 
hang it up on your refrigerator and hold yourself accountable to doing those things. Again, that can be part of the commitments that you make to yourself and that you see yourself following through with. The next one is do something every single day that fires you up, something that lights you up. Literally just something that fulfills you. Uh, personally for me, it's getting on client phone calls, it's seeing their progress, it's seeing their mental and emotional shifts that they're making, it's seeing how they're able to apply the mindset work that we're doing into every other area of their life, seeing their relationships improve, seeing their confidence improve, uh, seeing their jobs improve, their businesses improve, and that for me, that lights me the frick up and so I do something. I get to do something every day that lights me up. So do something every day that fills your heart. Do something that fills your cup, that fills your soul. I don't care what it is. Just do something that brings you fulfillment once a day and you will see your confidence improve. Every single time my heart is filled by my work, my confidence improves. And last but not least, this one is so huge, you guys. It is community and connection. Surround yourself with other individuals that inspire you, that motivate you to level up and not stay stuck in comfortability. Because confidence ain't over there in your comfort zone. She's not chilling there, she's over there. And you're gonna have to level up to get there. And the fastest and the most best and assured way to level up your life is to surround yourself with other individuals that are leveling up their lives, that are going to support you, that are going to hold you accountable. For example, in my program, we have such an incredible community of women that are showing up for themselves every single day to become the best versions of themselves from the inside out. And as soon as a new woman gets accepted into the program, she immediately feels the fire to level up her life because she's surrounded by a tribe of women that are inspiring her and encouraging her and empowering her to do the same. So whether that means hiring a coach to hold you accountable, whether that means joining a program to have a sisterhood and a tribe, which ooh, ooh, we got the best one in mind. Um, I don't care what that means for you. Just find a support system, find a tribe, find a group of people that are going to inspire you to level up and not stay stuck in that comfort zone where your confidence ain't hanging out at. You're gonna find so much confidence every time you do something to level up your life. And again, the fastest way to do that is in a group and a community of people that are doing the exact same thing. I get real fired up when I talk about the things that I love. Can you guys tell? I'm gonna end this video here. Um, I hope that you guys took some notes on these little steps and I hope that they can help you. I know that they can. They have helped me in my everyday life. They help the clients that I work with every single day. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know which ones out of all those steps that you're putting into practice and I'll hold you accountable to them. Um, so again, I'm gonna end this video here. I'm so excited that you guys took the time to watch. I have 11 now, I know I said nine, I have 11 more videos already planned, but I also really wanna know what you guys want to see and perhaps what's on my schedule will hit on some of the things that you guys wanna see, I think they might, but leave some comments below, let me know some video ideas, some things that you guys are interested in, this channel, it's for you. So please let me know what sort of topics would provide you value in your life. Um, and that's it. I'm gonna end the video here, guys. Hang on. I think we need to make this a regular thing where Luke does the outro. Come here, Bubba. Say goodbye to the people. Say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, YouTube. Don't forget. This is probably not how you would talk, but say goodbye, YouTube. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to help my mama subscribe to her channel. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. I love y'all.